Hello and welcome to my video of the top 10 games for the APF Imagination Station. This includes both variations of the APF when it came out as a console system as the MP1000, and then later the expanded version with a cassette deck called the APF Imagination Machine. So lumping all those games in, I've played through the whole library, took forever, <laughs> but I want to give you the top 10 games. First, we're going to do the honorable mentions. Not quite good enough to make the top 10, but still worth checking out if you're going to look into this library. So let's start with an MP1000 cartridge boxing. The graphics aren't too bad for this system. The next one's called Katina. This is also an MP1000 cartridge. And this one plays a pretty decent game of Othello. Defender. This is one of those cassettes that plays an audio as you load the game, which is always fun. It's a smooth game, plays well, just a little too easy. Donkey Kong. Yeah, this is obviously way worse than even the 2600 version, but I guess maybe recognizable as a Donkey Kong game, but, but way too slow. There's also Donkey Kong 2 by Reef Games, which is pretty awesome because it has three levels entirely, and there's a, a jumping mechanic built into it. So it's a, it's a pretty cool game, but I just can't recommend it because it's so slow. Next is Entrap. Some good quick action. Good for two-player, head-to-head. Escape. A lot like Berserk, but Escape is glitchy. Sometimes you shoot a bunch and doesn't seem to get through. Fire. Here's another game that has a cool audio play while you're loading it up. Now the ladders won't reach. You know, get over there with those nets. All right, come on, you guys. Get two partners. Get over there. Get over there with those nets as fast as you can. Now people are going to jump it out of their windows. And the final honorable mention is Micro Match, another cartridge from the MP1000. It's an excellent version of Concentration, but it's also just Concentration, so every system had that and nothing terribly special. So let's move into number 10. At the very bottom of the list, but it's still on the list, is Rattler. So Rattler is a snake game on the APF Imagination Machine. You go around and try to eat what seems like humans, which is kind of fun. <laughs> when you eat humans, it extends the size of your snake, as you'd expect. But I love it because it's not indefinite. You pass a level at 100 points per screen, and that resets your size of your snake back to the starting position, and you get to go on to another level. So it's really well implemented, colorful. The big drawback is the control scheme. It's kind of awful. I wish you had simple left, right, up, down, but you don't. It's R-T-I-O or something. Number nine, Lunar Lander. What was really impressive about this on the APF is it's obviously machine language program that runs in high-res mode, and so it's pixel animation, and it just, there wasn't a lot of games like that at all on this system, so this is cool. It's smooth animation. You get to try and land your rock on all these different landing pads. If you hit at least 13 of the 14, you reset them all again and keep on going. It's a little tricky at first, but you soon get the hang of it, and it's really not too bad. I would say it doesn't have high replay value, but it is one of the better APF games. Number eight, Alpha Centurion. This is a really nice action shooter in the vein of Space Invaders meets Galaxian, kind of. Too bad it's only like a limited column. You can only have so many spots where you're shooting in. It's like vertical columns. A lot of bullets will rain down, but luckily you can shoot the bullets as well as the ships. There's no other ships, but it was nice to play an action game on the APF instead of text games. So that's pretty slick. Number seven is Bugger. Your little bug is falling into a large spider web. 
I have to say, any game that loads with audio on the cassette track is already going to give a little bonus points. This one includes a nice opening screen graphic and actually an arcade game that also appears written in machine language because the speed is so much better than the basic nonsense on the APF. It's highly unpredictable in how fast the little buggers move around their areas though, making it extremely difficult. But at least I have played it again and again because it has some level of challenge and that makes it pretty fun. Number six, an adventure in murder. This one also has one of the best audios while you're loading the game. Mrs. McDermott was murdered last night. She lived in a 20-room mansion with a stairwell on either side. You must find out who killed the old lady from a suspect list provided. Kind of lays out the narrative of what's going on. So this is like a murder mystery game, kind of on the in the vein of Hunt the Wumpus, though. You have a mansion that you explore, and you have to pick up certain items, and also eliminate clues so that you know who did the murder. It's a cool game, there's some neat graphics on it, it's really slow, but if you speed up the emulation, it's fun. I played it a bunch so I could actually beat the game, and there's some randomness to it that doesn't make it easy to beat, you can't just beat it every time. So uh, I really liked it, Adventure and Murder is worth checking out. Number 5, Mission Improbable Alpha. There's also the Bravo uh, version of this game. But Mission Improbable Alpha, I felt, was the more polished version. You get to play a spy, and you're given certain missions to go in, infiltrate, take pictures, or plant bombs, or do all the stuff, and then escape. I really enjoyed the idea of this. There's good audio, there's, there's depth of gameplay, you can tunnel underground and pop up somewhere. There's also an alternate way to escape, just in case you forget to let down the gate and your rescue ship crashes and burns. So Mission Improbable Alpha. Fun, fun game. Number four, Pinball Wiz. I think I might have played this one more than any other. Just, I don't know why. I like pinball games for one. And I was trying to see <laughs> what happens when you knock down all the drop targets in succession. I was trying to get a high score. I wanted to see what things do. I just love playing pinballs to see what the, all the bells and whistles actually accomplish. And this was no different. Even though it was on the APF, it was actually really fun. Um, a little bit glitchy on the graphics side, but totally worth checking out. Alright, we're at the top three now. Starting at number three is Berserk. Berserk is, as you might guess, like Berserk. <laughs> a little bit different than Escape. This is a much better playing version. It's got a great audio track while you're loading the game. Just feels like Berserk, plays like Berserk, it's really fun. You run around the different mazes that are generated, and uh, I have to, have to give it to it for being a, a fun, playable arcade port. Dun, 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 number two, Space Destroyers. Now, most people put this as number one, but I have a surprise for you, number one. Number two, Space Destroyers almost wins every time, partly for its amazing audio intro as you're loading the game. For all of you who dreamed of battling and conquering the unknown, APF presents Space Destroyer, a computerized intergalactical game that pits your strategy and skill against an ominous force. It's excellent. Gotta check that out. But my problem why it's not number one is because it's just another Space Invaders clone. Definitely it's one of the best games on the APF. It's smooth, it plays well. It's got some sound, it's got all the, all the things you might expect from a Space Invaders game done well on a system that didn't do a lot of arcade type games well. But ultimately it's Space Invaders, and I get a little tired of Space Invaders, right? But it's a cool game and definitely worth playing on the APF. Which brings us to number one, Grey Skull. I think it probably has to do with He-Man. Grayskull, the castle, but I could be wrong, I don't know, couldn't read anything about the game. Anyway, Grayskull is cool because it's one of the only games that's in high-res mode and animates characters in high-res mode, so you're talking about pixel animation instead of just a, a sprite flying around the screen. It's got multiple levels, you have to jump pits, climb up, dodge things, and uh, it's just, it's different. It's 
was totally unexpected on the APF. After playing so many weird, basic, and crappy games, when I fired up Grayskull, it was like a whole different system almost. Good graphics, good gameplay, some depth of play. Kept you coming back to try and uh, get through the different levels and see what was next. Really enjoyed it, and uh, because it was the variety and the different nature of Grayskull, and the surprise of it all, I put this as my number one game on the APF Imagination Machine. So cool. Hope you enjoyed this list. Hope you saw a couple games you've never known about and might want to play. Thanks for watching. <laughs>